Hello there, Lunar Squadron, and welcome back to the channel. We are finally starting to see signs of life when it comes to a marketing campaign for Marvel Spider-Man 2 now that we are well into September, as throughout this past week, we got various brand new posters that gave us a great look at various suits and characters in Marvel Spider-Man 2, and on Saturday, we got a very lengthy article out of the New York Times that detailed open world details about New York City in this game and today we're going to break all of this down for you but first if you're new to the channel we would love to have you as always and the way to do that just go down below this video hit that little subscribe button the bell notification right on next to it it will notify you every single time that Andreas and I upload now with that out of the way Andreas let's talk about all of the new content we got this week oh yeah let's do this guys All right, Andreas, so I think the best place to start in this conversation is what we have gotten first this week. And of course, I am talking about the various brand new looks that we got at villains and suits in Marvel Spider-Man 2. Starting on September 5th, Insomniac started doing this daily post thing on Twitter where they showcased new looks at, at Peter, at Miles, at Craven. At the symbiote suit, we even got to see a new look at Venom. Like, all of these different character posters they started throwing up onto Twitter. And if you guys haven't seen these by now, I'm sure you will see them over the top of this video. And if you haven't seen them and want a more detailed look at them, go to Insomniac Games Twitter. They're all on there since September 5th. They're great. Very high fidelity. I, I love them for me personally because they're great thumbnail assets. So really appreciative to Insomniac for that. But Andreas, I think the more interesting part of this conversation when it comes to these posters is, do we think this is what Insomniac Games was cooking up when they were posting those tweets and the emojis over the last week? Or do we think this is just the beginning? You know, that's a really great question, Nick. And obviously, guys, uh, a lot of this conversation here is going to be speculative. But, you know, I think it's, it's very interesting to kind of just read the tea leaves here and try to read Insomniac's intentions. Because, Nick... If you're asking me personally, I think Insomniac was drumming up quite a bit of hype with some of those posts, and so that's kind of playing with fire. People start to imagine all of the sorts of possibilities that could come out when they're saying that they're cooking. I think a lot of people, their minds went straight to, are we getting a trailer? Are we getting a state of play, like an entire state of play dedicated to this game? And so if you lead with that sort of hype drumming, and then you follow with a few screenshots not to downplay the screenshots which are incredible nick I, I like i really do love these screenshots but i feel like if this is it if that is what the hype train was referring to then i think people are going to be left a little bit disappointed and so i really do hope that insomniac would maybe pick up on that and that they are actually going to deliver and when they're really promising that level of hype of course guys it was just a frying pan, I guess, so like they weren't making any promises for anything in particular, but if they are drumming up hype in that fashion, like we can all read in between the lines and maybe, just maybe, expect something a little more punchy out of this Insomniac group, but you know what, Nick, if anything, I think that might have been a symbol that they are cooking up their marketing campaign, that their marketing campaign leading up to launch has officially kicked off and it's starting off with these daily screenshots, but we might just be seeing bigger and better releases and more information leading into launch and an increase of that hype exponentially as we arrive at that October 20th release date. And I think this article from the New York Times here is a great step in the right direction. So what do you think, Nick? Are these screenshots the be-all end-all for the hype train or are we waiting for something bigger and better? No, these are very obviously the beginning of their marketing campaign for Spider-Man 2. Like things are just going to pick up over the next few weeks and this definitely seems like the beginning of I definitely do think if this so-called rumored state of play is going to happen in September, this is something to be announced like this upcoming week if it's going to happen. So I guess keep an eye out on that like for a potential announcement. It would have to happen over the next week or two. Like if it's going to happen in September, it's now or never when it comes to an announcement for that. But 
A couple things that I do want to touch on on these character posters before we jump into this article that I just personally found interesting and would love to hear the thoughts of people down below in the comments is, A, we finally got a really good look at Lizard out of this character poster, and he looks phenomenal. I am surprised that they decided not to go for the lab coat approach when it comes to the Lizard, but I actually really like the design that Insomniac came up with for his character. He looks terrifying. He looks like he's going to be a complete bitch to deal with in terms of fighting him. Like, he looks really strong. Really, really excited to come across him in this game and, and do battle with Dr. Connors. And the other thing is, is I appreciated that they did the Venom and Symbiote suit posters in the same background and in the same pose because it really allows us to contrast the two and just see how the Symbiote evolves throughout the game, like how it goes from looking like a suit of armor on Peter with some organic components to it to just a complete organic venom in the next poster that they released and i do think it's interesting i'm not saying it means anything i do think it's interesting that peter in a symbiote suit and then the venom shot has the same background and the same pose i'm not saying it means anything but just food for thought i think that is a uh, very interesting decision by insomniac take it for for what you will but andreas i want to get into this brand new article that we got out of the new york times because it provides some great new details for the open world of New York City in this game. Now, it is a very lengthy article, but I think there are four, five or so paragraphs that we should highlight and really get into. That's right, Nick. And of course, Nick is referring to the article entitled Spider-Man 2's New York is a Web of Skyscrapers and Brownstones. This is an article written by Zachary Small, reporter for the New York Times. And Nick, you know, where I'd really like to start this off is with this particular segment of the article um, where it says... In the sequel, players will control two Spider-Men as they navigate new responsibilities and powers, including the ability to jet through the skies with web wings. Parker and Miles Morales, who is from Brooklyn, will twist into knots over a symbiote suit that warps Parker into a villain from the comics, the alien parasite called Venom. Nick, is this a big revelation or is Zachary Small little in over his head with this? Yeah, that sentence kind of got all of us when we read this being like, whoa, hold up a second. What the hell does that mean? But I'm going to be honest with you, Andreas. No offense to this guy and no offense to the New York Times, but do you really expect the New York Times to have the most like cutting edge analysis when it comes to video games? Like The fact that there is even a New York Times article about Spider-Man 2 was shocking to me in the first place. So I have a feeling I think the safe choice here, or the safe opinion here is that he was just a little in over his head. He didn't mean that. When he's talking about Venom, he's referring to the symbiote suit because a lot of people who aren't, you know, huge fans of Spider-Man, they see the symbiote suit and they're like, oh, look, it's Venom because, like, he looks just like Venom, so Peter becomes Venom. I don't think this is a reveal or a confirmation that, that Peter is becoming Venom. Now, of course, that is always a possibility. That is one of the more popular opinions out there in the world that Peter will become Venom, but I don't think we're going to get confirmation that that is the case out of a New York Times article in September that's detailing components of the open world for New York City. I just don't think that Insomniac and PlayStation would allow that, like green light that to occur in this article. I think this author just misinterpreted this, the circumstances. What I do think is interesting is that it does at least sound like that Peter and Miles are going to fight over this. Like this symbiote suit is going to drive a wedge into their relationship. And I think that's something that we're all expecting. That honestly is something that really shocked me because when I just was reading the vibes from the gameplay and story trailers for this game, I wouldn't have necessarily said that Miles' motive would be to, you know, pry the symbiote suit from Peter to use its power or any sort of thing like that. If anything, the intention that I would have read out of those trailers is that Peter is becoming drunk with power, being influenced by the symbiote suit, and Miles, in the best interest for Peter's health, wants to pry the suit off of Peter so that he can then help his friend and maybe sober him up from the addiction that Peter does have from that symbiote suit. So I'm wondering if maybe this reporter has has missed 
misread that intention because that's really how I've read this game and the dynamics between Peter and Miles to be. And I'd love to hear what you all have to say in the comments down below. Of course, everyone has their own independent reading of these trailers and different interpretations of how this storyline is going to play out. And until we actually get our hands on the game and see how things play out, there will be no official confirmation. But Nick, I agree with you. I'm not quite sure that the New York Times would have gotten the green light or authorization from Insomniac to reveal a significant plot detail such as this apparent fact that Peter Parker is going to be turning into a villain uh, from the comics, the alien parasite called Venom. I, I think that might be a little overextension there. I mean, that would be the biggest reveal in this game. And I just like it's not coming out of a New York Times article in September. Like, I just don't believe that. But to continue... This article then provides some great new details about how Insomniac developed in New York City to fit the gameplay that they were going after and the mechanics that they had developed for the game. The next paragraph says, The drama unfolds across a landscape of construction cranes, water towers, bridges, and tunnels, infrastructure that Insomniac designers studied for months. It continues with, Everything is very intentionally placed, Benavidez said, noting that there must be plenty of objects to show off the physics of Spider-Man's web-slinging abilities. One design solution was to plant more trees that you would find in the real New York City. Some changes provide sly commentary with additional greenery and shade in the virtual Times Square and a plethora of newspaper kiosks bordering refuges like Union Square Park. Other choices skew closer to reality. Trash cans and heaps of garbage fill the city's sidewalks. So this just details how Insomniac made their decisions when designing the New York City in their game to fit the gameplay and just make the gameplay smooth and flow together and honestly just be fun for the player. And speaking of Times Square, we actually got a brand new look at what Times Square is going to look like in Marvel Spider-Man 2, and it looks phenomenal. Yeah, and I've actually seen uh, at least one Twitter account already post a side-by-side -side between this new and updated Times Square shot from Spider-Man 2 and then uh, held up against the Spider-Man remastered Times Square. And people are really pointing out that it looks a lot more populated, more detailed. I'm going to place the side-by-side -side here for you guys so that you can be the judge. There definitely appears to be more foot traffic and automobile traffic in Times Square. And so I am wondering if they're really going to pull from the power of the PS5 to make this city even more immersive than what we would have experienced all the way back in 2018 for those of us who have not played Spider-Man since 2018 when that game launched. And so I'm wondering if since a lot of this map is going to be technically the same areas of New York, it might be a totally new experience just given that amount of population and, and the new touches that this game has received from the PS5. And on top of that, Nick, on that note that you mentioned about adding trees, uh, they also dropped this screenshot of the Grand Army Plaza arc in Brooklyn, and they've added more trees in this area as well from its real-life counterpart, and I think this shot just looks phenomenal. This looks so good to me, and I cannot wait to explore Brooklyn and Queens in this game. Just new areas that are rumored to double the size of the original map, and I cannot wait to dig into that. Yeah, I just hope that these screenshots and the looks at the character posters, if those are in-engine, will just kind of silence the people who were complaining after the gameplay reveal trailer when they were worried and bitching about a build of the game that was multiple months away from being finished, but wanted to pass final judgment on the way it looked, because that's just what we do when it comes to PlayStation versus Xbox arguments in today's world. But I want to go back to what you said about relying on the power of the PS5, because the last two paragraphs that I want to highlight in this article deal with that were that says Marvel Spider-Man 2 was built specifically for the more powerful PlayStation 5, which allowed Chu's team to design buildings with greater depth. Spider-Man may see more than his reflection when he scales a skyscraper with some windows that peer into office cubicles and living rooms. And the last paragraph I want to hone in on here is depicting a famous city, however, takes more than meticulous renderings. Although the Chrysler building appears in the 2018 Spider-Man game, it is missing in the 2020 spinoff Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales because Insomniac could not reach a copyright agreement with the building's new owners, and the studio says that the skyscraper will also be absent in Marvel Spider-Man 2. So just some details about what we can expect when it comes to new features. When you're you know climbing up the side of a building, you won't just see 
your reflection all the time, you'll actually be able to look into these buildings sometimes. And that will just help kind of build the universe out more, allow you to live in it more, just make it more believable than just seeing like reflective windows on every single building. You'll actually be able to see people living in this world and their workspaces and all of that kind of stuff, which is very exciting. It's a small detail, but all of these details really add up. And then the last thing here, Chrysler building, it's just not going to be a Marvel Spider-Man 2. That's unfortunate, but I don't think anyone playing this game is going to be swinging around and be like, damn, this game could be a 10 out of 10, but no Chrysler building, so 7 out of 10. <laughs> you know what, Nick? Uh, I, I am ashamed to admit this, but I didn't notice that there wasn't the Chrysler building in Miles Morales. So um, I, I would say that I'm so upset that it's not going to be in the next game. But to be honest with you, I didn't even notice it wasn't in Miles Morales. So, you know, I, I guess I can't really be too upset at this point. I feel very outed by that realization. You know when I realized that the Chrysler building wasn't in Miles Morales? When, what is that? When I read this article this morning from the New York <laughs> Times. Yeah, me, me too, Nick. Me too. And if you're if you're in that camp, guys, uh, you're you're in safe company here at Lunar Squadron. I'm sure there's some angry New Yorkers uh, in the comments that are going to say, you know, how how dare you guys forget about the Chrysler Building? But um, and there's also going to be a fair amount of people that are also going to be shocked that you can copyright architecture. But you know, the more you know, you can really copyright uh, all sorts of creative works, including architecture. So. There you have it, a little a little uh, legal lesson from, from Lunar Squadron as well. Thank you, Mr. Attorney. We all appreciate that in our Spider-Man 2 video. Anyway, guys, let us know down below in the comments what you guys thought of all of the character posters that Insomniac released throughout this week. We think they look absolutely incredible. Do you guys think that is what Insomniac Games was cooking up this whole time? Or do you, like us, think that this is the beginning of the great marketing push for Marvel Spider-Man 2? And let us know what you guys think of this New York Times article. If you guys haven't had a chance, it is a good read. It's a little lengthy, but provides some great details about how Insomniac built New York City and what New York City will be like in Marvel Spider-Man 2. Of course, guys, we love hearing everything that you guys have to say and reading through all of your comments and opinions and ideas, so definitely do that. Anyway, this is going to do it for us for this one. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, we will see you all next time.